Yesterday's attack on our base was fierce, but thankfully very limited in damage. While they took out most of the SU-30s and SU-25s that were to be deployed from this base, most of the infrastructure was left intact thanks to our defense. We are however down to just three JF-17s due to losing one during the attack. A replacement will be delivered sometime during the day, courtesy of the Pakistan Air Force. Until then, Thunder Lead will fly alone. We still press on towards Sochi Air Base in order to take this location for ourselves. Ground forces are now barely an hour's drive time away from the base, but there are several obstacles in the way. One, the flankers at Gudara will be handled by a Tu-160 launching cruise missiles at the base. The pilot will take a risk in by flying alone, but hopefully most of the enemy Su-27s will be caught on the ground. Thunder 1 flight will engage four road checkpoints that the Soviets have used to monitor local traffic. These checkpoints can easily be turned into strong points should they be reinforced by enemy troops. They are located at waypoint 2, 3, 4 and 5. All four must be destroyed to ensure a safe passage for our troops. We recommend GBU-12s or BRM-1 rockets for the task at hand. Do keep in mind that our supply of GBU-12s are limited. Thunder 2 Flight will conduct a fighter sweep in the area and keep the skies clear of threats against our own forces, as well as provide cover for the strike packages. Bolt Flight will engage the enemy mechanized company, currently moving up the coast. It is imperative that these vehicles do not reinforce the current strongpoints. It is unclear if Sochi have received any replacement aircraft, but considering the airport's vulnerable position, we suspect they may only have second-line quality airplanes left. The enemy still maintain a reduced squadron of Su-27 flankers at Kudada Air Base. Expect the enemy to have distributed man pads and RPGs amongst their supporters' intergeneral population. Do not fly lower than you have to. We are clear to proceed. Coverage is being inserted. Transferring data and setting up the data link. Warning. We don't need the master warning, thank you very much. Flaps down, and we are taxiing to runway 22. Well, it's not like we need the rest of the runway anyway. Shooter taking the active. Full throttle. And rotating. Wheels up. Altitude, altitude, altitude. And flaps up. We are approaching waypoint 2, time to go fence in. Air to ground master mode. The pod is not powered, so we'll fix that first thing. Pod has power. We will uncage it and we'll slave it to the target waypoint, which is 02. 
Then we will be prepping bombs. We will be delivering one Mark 83 in the CCIP configuration. That should be ample for this target or so, I hope. We will be rolling in from about 16,000 and that should be enough for us to avoid any enemy anti-aircraft fire. Now we also need to closely watch our fuel gauge because uh, we don't have any extra tanks. So we only have the bombs we brought with us. Master arm is on. And we are closing on the target. Let's do a tiny pop-up just before the dive. And we start the dive at... 3... 2... 1... The angle of attack around 15 should be sufficient. Uh, but we might actually lower that to 20 just to get the initial bombing run over with quickly and efficiently. We are ready to deliver a present. Bomb away! Good hits on the target. A checkpoint has been destroyed. Right, let's uh, tie this targeting pod to waypoint Tracking. three. And do it all over again. We'll pop up to around 12,000. And from there we will commence the attack with the second Mark 82 warhead. We can't pull too many Gs on this because if we do we might risk a general failure with the bomb. And I don't need to tell you that would actually be quite bad. I mean, you don't you don't want a bomb that doesn't detach. We're going to have a bit of a steeper dive here. Uh, angle of attack is 40. And we should get rid of the second bomb quickly enough. Pickle. Tracking. Tracking. Might be that that was not a perfect hit. We'll come around with the rockets and do it all over again. The rockets are on electronic fuse. But in order to use them properly, we will have to uncage them and not have them slaved to the waypoint. Slowing down and trying to find the target there's a lot of shit there I can't I can't imagine how we didn't hit it oh that might be it we did hit just to the, the side of it good hits on the target a checkpoint so we actually demolished the entire road next to the target, but the bomb was not actually accurate enough to destroy it. That is kind of annoying. We'll head to waypoint 4, 
and we'll need to gain some altitude before the attack. In order to gain some awareness of where the target is, we'll slave. Alright, so in the forest then. Rocket away. We only fired a single rocket. We'll need to re-engage and make sure that we fire a salvo at the very least to properly destroy the target. At least we have a lock on the location now, so anything else should be child's play, just move in and do another run. We might have to confirm what we're aiming at. Yeah, we, we should be good on this. Rockets away. Pull up, pull up, pull up. Why aren't we hitting it? We're just hitting the road, as it were. But the installation itself is still Warning. intact. Warning. That is not a good sign. Warning. I think our pod just got hit. Warning. Please tell me our pod did not Warning. become hit because then we do have Warning. a problem because the rest of our weapons can't be guided Warning. without it. Warning. Warning. Slave it. Warning. 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 We'll need to gain some altitude. Warning. And then Warning. we re-engage. I think the pod the pod appears Warning. to be fine. Uh, Warning. But so far, it doesn't Warning. appear to want to slave itself to the to the waypoint. Either way, this is not really looking good. Tracking, tracking, tracking. Okay, so I tried to release the release the pod, but it's not beaming anything. Not even force. Wait, Hello. there it goes. Good hits on the target. A checkpoint has been destroyed. I was worried there for a moment. We only have a single target left, so let's head over there now and make the most of it. As long as we can hit that target, even with the red-lighted pod, we should be alright. The target is over that hill, so we need to climb in order to have a good angle on it. Classic pop-up. I have the building in sight. Rockets away. In fact, let's fire a few more since the first ones were fired at ins too great a range. We can't guarantee the first ones are going to hit. Well, that should hopefully be all of them. Hopefully. We're down to about 50% fuel. All primary targets have been destroyed. You may return to base, Thunderflight. 
Don't mind if I do. Coming in for landing. We seem to have a little bit of a problem here. Neither flaps nor speed brakes are actually responding. Pull up, pull up, pull up. Altitude, altitude, altitude. And neither is the landing gear. I don't know what the hell hit us, but whatever it did just must have went haywire with our hy hydraulics. So what I'm gonna do now is dangerous. It is something that is not likely to work. It is something that is utterly and fucking mad. We'll have to land on the rocket pods. And for that we might actually want to put master arm to off so we don't ignite them. We're going to try and land on our pods alone and we lost the shoot. I say again, we lost the shoot. Well, at least the friction will make sure we stand where we get put. So, this mission certainly proved to be interesting. First of all, we have the MiG-25 recon bomber trying to scout out our base. Then we have the Blackjack here that is launching cruise missiles at Gudara. And as you can see, most of the cruise missiles are very close to the base when the flankers try to intercept them. And the flankers... Well, there's too many missiles and they have too little time. Simple as that. So the majority of the missiles do hit Gudara. Now, we were a bit late in taking off and that was by design. I wanted the cap to be fully operational over the area before we committed to the primary targets. And as you can see, two SU-24 fences are already in the air over the target area. We went in for our first target and delivered a Mark 83 warhead to the target. And that went well, and it was probably the only attack run that we did that could actually be classified as going well. The second bomb destroyed pretty much everything here, but we didn't, it didn't register for the primary target. So the primary target was still active, which is kind of annoying when you have to go around and do it all over again. But we managed to do that. And uh, we went for the next target. And I think here is where our problems began. Because there is a Shirka here. And those are actually kind of dangerous. You don't want to mess with them. And I think some at some point we must have been hit. I'm not sure if by what or whatever. But we must have been hit. And that caused problems with our... Yeah... Th there it was. We got hit pretty bad. And whatever it did caused a bunch of problems, first with our targeting pod, but later also with our hydraulics. And that is why we had to belly land. So we kept on attacking all the targets here. And meanwhile, Thunder 2 flight wiped the floor with the... SU-27 flankers that were in the air and uh, the Soviet mechanized company defending Sochi was also heavily reduced by bolt flight. So that is pretty much all there is to it. We headed for home and quickly realized that we did have a bunch of issues. And to be honest, those issues are kind of scary. Because I don't want to crash the plane utterly. And I don't want to uh, make a mistake or anything. So I literally had to belly land. The gears would not extend. The flaps would not extend. The speed brake would not extend. And even when you're belly landing, you rely on at least having the speed brake. And 
To be honest, our speed when we came in was still so fucking high that we lost the shoot almost immediately. But still, we did manage to get the job done. We barely landed and our plane can now be repaired, but I suspect the mechanics are gonna hate me. 